Alright guys, welcome to RC Mojo. As I've still not got out to run any of the RCs since last week, we're going to upgrade the next a bit with some parts from the spares box. Right, I've already unbolted the body, so that can just lift off. First for the upgrades are the friction shocks. As we saw in the first video, the stock ones have no damping whatsoever, which means the wheels spend most of their time off the ground. So that means less speed, less steering and less grip. Not good. After digging around in the boxes of many things, I found some Traxxas front dampers from an old electric stampede. Way back when Traxxas still did proper kits. One of them has a slightly bent shaft, but as long as it doesn't end up leaking, it'll do the job. I've already cleaned them up and put in some fresh 45 weight oil, so we're ready to go. The friction shocks come off easy enough though, there's a screw at the top and a screw at the bottom. In the case of this particular next, the bottom screws have been replaced with hex heads. Normally they'd be Phillips. We want to keep the spring retainer and spring, uh, the rest can all go in the parts bin. Traxxas dampers normally get fitted with an M3 screw with a large shoulder, but that won't work on the front of the next with its captured tower. The classic fix for this is a bit of silicon fuel tube, the stuff you normally use on nitro cars and glow models. Even if you run electric, it's handy to have a meter or so of the stuff. Now, even with the larger Kyosho spring retainer, the spring is still just a little bit short. So to make up the difference, I'm going to use a large preload spacer. No need to get fancy on a model like this. The assembled damper then just goes in where the friction shock came from, using the same screws. And as I'm sure you can guess, the other side is no different. So, well, there we go. Nice. <laughs> if I press down on the front, it no longer jumps off the ground. Behold the power of proper damping. Now to tackle the back. It's worth noting the front and rear Kyosho springs aren't the same. The rears are far, far stiffer. If you're upgrading one of these, do them in pairs. Just as before, all the screws come out, we only want to keep the springs and retainers from the shocks. I'm going to use the large preload spacers again, but I'm thinking they might not be needed, as the rear springs are a bit longer too. Of course, both the dampers are fitted with the four screws we removed. Must admit, I kind of missed the big red shocks. They did look a bit different. Next, uh, well, I won't call it an upgrade, but more a safety measure, so the servo doesn't go pop. The Kyosho Servo Saver. The kit would normally come with one, but this eBay example didn't. You may remember in the first video we just used a straight servo arm, which works, but it isn't ideal with a plastic geared servo. So I got the spares pack that includes the stock saver. I would have used one of these Gimbro type ones, but the body is just too big. The Kyosho is a bit sloppy, but it'll do. The kit comes with three bosses for the servo saver to fit different servos. I was hoping the spares pack might have a Futaba boss. But it didn't. Luckily though, I have a cache of various servos and found a high-tech HS311 that fits the boss I ended up with perfectly. So, a quick servo swap, using the servo saver to make sure everything's nice and centred, and we're good to go. Now, when the non-RC people get their go, they can't destroy the servo in the first 30 seconds, which is good. <laughs> Next up, the motor. Now, I'm not sure how well this will run, as it's seen a lot of use. It's had a good clean out and a new set of brushes, but the comm is pretty worn, and I don't have easy access to a comm lathe. The days when every model shop would cut your comm are long gone. Anyway, it's a 19 turn Speed Gems 2, so it should give a little boost. I'm also replacing the stock plastic pinion with this brass one. It's a bit smaller than the stock one, so it will give a bit more torque at the cost of speed. More donuts with any luck. <laughs> right, the first hurdle is the gear cover. On most models, it's a case of removing two or three screws. Kyosho, however, thought it was a good idea to use clips. Clips that are all but impossible to, well, unclip. <laughs> I got it off in the end though, but wow, what a pain. The motor drops out after removing the usual pair of screws. The hole in the motor mount is big enough that the pinion fits through, so you don't have to pry it off first. The brass pinion is quite a bit smaller than the stock one, hopefully it will reach the spur. New motor in, screws in, pinion on, and nope, doesn't fit. <laughs> Not a problem though, there's plenty of meat on the motor mount, so I just elongated the holes a little with a file. Only half a millimetre or so on each. With the mesh set, we can hook up the wires, clip the cover back on, and refit the wheel. 
The body might as well get fitted too. Oh, of course we'll need a battery to test. Good old NICAD. Still need to work out a better method of fitting that front panel. Magnets still seem like the best bet. Right, radio on, buggy is on, and it works. <laughs> Sounds a bit rough, but that's the new brushes catching on the old com. They'll wear in a bit after a couple of minutes of steady running. Can't wait to see how it runs. I'd love to give it a test, but it's raining, and it's set to be raining during every bit of time I might have to try it. Never mind now, something about good things and waiting comes to mind. So yeah, the next is coming along nicely. We'll have to look into the bodywork soon, a bit of paint maybe, but that's not for today. Hope you enjoyed the video, if you did, well, I'm sure you know where this is going. Yep, please hit that like button and subscribe. Thanks for watching, bye. <laughs>